Hey, what's up? My name is Chris, and welcome to Coding in Public. Today, I want to walk you through an introduction to using the terminal. Now, this will be kind of a flyby, and so I just encourage you to see if there's something you don't know, and if so, just start to slowly incorporate one of those things into your workflow, and then when you need it, come back and grab one more thing. If you're already an expert, then maybe give me some suggestions of other things that I could add to this introductory list. All right, so I just did a video last week on my channel showing how to get this prompt set up and going with ZSH and all my ZSH. So what I'm gonna do now is just show you some navigation, creating, deleting, all that kind of stuff, just basic commands that you might use with the terminal. If you're new to web development, a lot of times the terminal can be frustrating and it was for me for sure. And I'm still, like I said, not an expert. So I hope I can be a help to those of you who are still learning your way into the terminal. Like I said, we're gonna move pretty quickly. So let's go ahead and just tick through these right here and then we'll kind of keep going. But the intention here is just to be able to show you these quickly and let you come back to them when you need them. I've got a blog post here that I just published to my site. You can go ahead and check this out and kind of walk through it with me if you want. And over here, I've got Hyper, which is the terminal I recommended in last week's video on how to get started with a better terminal than the default one that comes on Mac OS or Windows. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. First of all, we've got PWD, that doesn't stand for password, it stands for present working directory. Now, in this case, because this prompt tells me exactly where I'm at, if I come in here and use that second command, CD, and come into my documents, and maybe come into my coding in public, and then maybe my sample directory, and hit enter, it already tells me what my present working directory is. So typing PWD doesn't super help because I already get that full thing in my prompt. Like we've already seen, CD changes to a different directory, and you can do CD uh, double dot, and it takes you up a directory. Think about it like uh, imports in JavaScript or something like this. When you have imports, you're going up a level. It's the same kind of thing here in your terminal. Now, if you have oh my ZSH, you actually don't have to type CD first. You can just do double tap like that, and it'll drop you up to the next directory. Let's come back into my sample here, and then let's go up three levels. And again, with oh my ZSH, you can just do three dots like that, and it'll drop you all the way back up three levels. Now, if you're ever not sure what you have available to you, so if I come back into my CIP and then into my sample like this, uh, you can type LS and it will list out everything inside your working directory. Usually your, uh, your terminal will color code folders a different color than all the files, and you can see that's what's going on here. With OMIZSH, you can actually toggle back and forth between directories just using the dash. So here you go, back and forth to the two most recent directories. All right, let's go ahead and clear that out. And let me actually just point you to a cheat sheet that comes with OMIZSH where they talk you through a bunch of other options as well. We're going to get into some of these in a second where I'll show you how to use these. Uh, like we're going to use this take command right here, this MC MKCD command. But some of the ones I've already shown you here, like these double dots or triple dots, or you can keep it going all the way back as far as you want, or CD to the last directory come from this cheat sheet. All right, back inside here, and let's actually jump back into that sample folder and now type code dot, and that will open this up inside of VS Code. All right, and you can see all the folder structure inside of that sample folder. You can also open it in your Finder or your Explorer using open dot and that works just fine or if it's like a text document it'll open your text edit or whatever your default is for text documents all right past basic navigation let's come into creating and deleting folders and files to create a file you just type touch like this and then you can create whatever file name you want uh, let's go ahead and let's come in here and let's create like a about.html and at the same time a main.css something like that now, if I go ahead and ls, that will list out all the available things. And you can see now I got this about and the main CSS both there. You can also make directory. So mkdir for make directory. And let's call this uh, project uh, one. And again, ls, and you see project one now shows right here. So you can see how quick this is once you get this under your fingertips. I could come in here very quickly and make a folder, go into that folder, create a bunch of files, and let me show you how to do that. Like I said, this cheat sheet shows you one more thing you can do with OMIZSH, which is you can make and move into a directory at the same time. When you make a directory, you don't automatically move into it, but you can with this command. So let's come back over here. I'm gonna say take project two, like this, and I moved into it. Now let's touch an index.html file, a style.css file, and an app.js file. And now if I list this out, you can see all three of those files are created, and that's way faster than doing it in some kind of GUI once you get that under your fingertips. Now, when it comes to permanently deleting files, you use RM. And again, this means permanently delete. There's no recovery from this. I can come in here now and type like app.js, and it should remove that from that directory. If I list out, it is gone. Now let's go back up one level, and now let's remove the folder. 
you have to actually pass this R or recursive flag to delete everything in a folder. And now I'm going to pass in the folder name. So that was called project uh, two. And now if I list this out, project two should be gone and it is. Now it is important to note this irrevocably deletes the entire file or folder, whatever you pass to it. And there's no way to get this back. So it doesn't put in your trash or anything like that. It just permanently deletes it. So it's a dangerous command. And if you delete something, it is gone, gone, gone. So I'm gonna show you in a second how you can actually modify this to pass a trash command instead. And that will actually always send it to your recycle bin or trash can on your machine so you can quickly get it back. So I'll show you that kind of at the end. All right, next, if I come back down here, you can see how searching and repeating terminal commands is something you can do very quickly and easily. So let's actually head back up a couple levels, actually one more, so to my documents, and let's take CI, and let's say I can't remember exactly what that's called. I mean, it's just one more letter, but you know, sometimes you don't remember the name of the folders. If I hit tab, it'll actually complete that for me using autocomplete. So it searches everything available and shows me that option. If I come in here, Great, now let's go ahead and make a directory. We're gonna call this sample uh, one. Now, if I come in here now, and I'm not exactly sure, I know it's sample something, I start with Sam and hit tab again, it'll show me any other options that start with that same lettering. So if I hit tab one more time, I can now come inside here, and let's say I want this folder. Now you may have noticed I made a little mistake, and that is I forgot to hit change directory first, so CD first, so let's go ahead and clear all this out, and I'll do CD, now I'll do sample like that, tab, and now you can see here are different options for me, and now if I come in here, it will actually move to that folder. Now you don't actually have to know what it starts at, you can just auto-complete to nothing, so if I do CD tab, it'll show me every possible option, tab one more time, and now I can use my arrow keys, and just move around wherever I want, and then go directly to that spot. So tabbing with autocomplete is super helpful, and that comes with ZSH by default, which is the big improvement over Bash, uh, which used to be the default on macOS. Now, if you want to go back and repeat different terminal commands, you can just hit the up arrow, and you can see it just cycles through the last commands that I passed it. If you don't want to cycle through them, you can hit Control R and a little search window pops up. And as I start typing, anything I type will actually search through my previous commands and I can start running one of those right away. Let's go ahead and stop that though. Next, I want to show you that you can combine different commands. So let's say I want to install and run everything in this current directory. Let's so actually go up one level and I do know that in here I have a package.json file. There it is, so I know I've got something that I can run and install. So let's type npm install and with this double ampersand, I can chain commands together. So when this command is done, go ahead and then do npm run build. So you can see it installs first and then it errors out because I actually don't have a build script in here, but you can see that what it did is install and then it built. I wasn't exactly sure where to put this command, but you do have a manual available to you that you can use for any terminal commands. You're not sure exactly what they do. So you just type man and then the name of the command. So in this case, let's use the list command, ls. There are a bunch of flags that you can actually pass with this. If I scroll down here, you're gonna see all the different options and I've used like almost none of these before. Um, but the one I do like is this L, which gives you a long list of the file format, including basically what permissions things have. So looking at the man pages, even though they're not the easiest things to read, will give you a really good indication of what you can do with each terminal command. Now you might notice that I've got this blinking cursor down here next to a colon. You hit Q and that cancels you out of that. I think that has to do with Vim. I've not learned Vim yet. One of these days I want to, um, but those of you who are more expert can let me know if that's not right. With that newfound knowledge, let's go ahead and list with an L flag. And now I get all of those things, including the permissions that they have on the hard drive, when they were created, all that kind of stuff. All right, let's clear that out. And I cleared that out using one of these next commands, which is control L. Now, depending on your machine, you can also type a command K, depending on the program you're in. You can also type simply clear, and that will also clear it out the same way. So that's all those different ways you can clear out commands. Now I'm gonna go ahead and search for parcel, and because I had recently been installing it, this can take a while to install. So if you ever wanna cancel a current command, whether it's like a dev server running or some kind of install script, you just hit command C, I'm sorry, that's control C. Even on a Mac, it's control C, and that will cancel the current command. All right, now, depending on your terminal program, you may or may not have these, but they're very common, so I figured I would go over them. A Command T, again, this is on Mac, opens up another uh, instance, another tab. If Command W closes that tab down, and that's the same as like Google Chrome or other things like that. You can open split tabs, so Command D opens those next to each other. Let me go ahead and close that one down with Command W, or Command Shift D opens them up and down. So depending on how you lay out your terminal, this can be really helpful to go either side to side or up and down, maybe like an express server running on one and your front end dev server running on the other, and to have them both right next to each other and both visible is super helpful.
And now lastly, I just have two more customizations that I want to point your attention to. One is this install z.sh for quick navigation. And I've got it right here. But basically what you can do is install this special script and you can point oh my zsh to it and it will basically give you some superpowers when it comes to moving around. So if I come in here, let's view the code. It's this file right here. And I'll, again, I'll leave a link to this in the description. But you just copy this here. And the easiest thing to do is to come in here and let's see, view the raw. That's what I was looking for. And then if you hit Command S, you can save this in a pop-up dialog. Just make sure you save it at the very root of your machine. So in my case, I would do Command Shift G on a Mac and then make sure I'm in the very root like that. And then I would save it inside here. With it saved as Z.sh, let's come back over this way. I walk you through how to do this, but you're gonna save it and then just add this somewhere in your .zshrc file. So to get to that, I'm gonna open it in my code editor. I know it's at the root and it's .zs. H, H, I'll just tab and I see other options there. That's the one I want. And here it is right here. So let me come back down here and I'm gonna add it in, let's see right here. So you see it's already added in for me, which is perfect. So as long as it's there, you can just start navigating your folder system like you normally would. Actually, I'm gonna go back to the very beginning. And then instead of using the CD command, once it kind of learns your behavior, it will basically predict what you want to go to. So it's really quick to get into stuff. So let's say I wanna go back into that sample folder. I've already CD'd into it several times. And because I've had this on my, my machine from the start of this video, it's been watching that. So now I can just do Z sample, enter, and it will just drop me right in there. And it'll just pick up basically what you type, what folders are connected to that, and predict to the best of its ability which one you wanna jump into. So especially if you're working in lots of different directories, this can be a huge help. Next, like I mentioned, and last, this install the trash CLI is super important because RM removes stuff permanently and irrevocably, and there's no way to get around it. So what we're gonna wanna do is type this command anywhere in our machine because we're typing global, it will install it globally. Now I've already done this, but that means now I can come in here and if I hit type, let's first of all list and see what we got, let's remove that main CSS. So if I type trash main.css, it'll actually delete that and put it in my, in my trash can. That means I can actually put it right back in the folder if I want, and it's basically not permanently deleted, and that's what I want. And in fact, they recommend that you add this line to your .cshrc file, or it actually works with bash as well. And that way, even if you type rm, it'll actually move it to the trash. And uh, spoiler alert, I already did that, so that's why everything I was doing, I was doing quickly because I knew it was just gonna end up in the trash. And you can see that's what I've done right here, this alias rm equals trash. Now, whenever I use the rm command, it'll actually just put it in my uh, trash can as well. You wanna make sure that you've set that up correctly and sample it with something that you don't care about. So that way, if for some reason uh, it didn't work, typing rm like, I don't know, whatever, app.js doesn't permanently delete some file that you really, really need. Well, I hope this is a big help, especially if you're brand new to the terminal. If there's other things that you would teach beginners, let me know in the description below. Or if there's other advanced commands that you want me to learn, I am all over that. So let me know in the description. Hey, well, thanks so much for your time. I will catch you in the next one. Happy coding.